Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and the world. Amen. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 through 2 and 6 through 9. Moses said, So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You, are, you must observe them digi diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who when they hear all these statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as the entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 15, we'll read this responsibly. I will read the odd numbers and you will uh, respond with uh, even numbers. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill. Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. 
He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back the, his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the epistle of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, 
the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, that this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Loving God, make these words more than words and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, beloved, as we enter a new month and a new season, we also re-enter back into the Gospel of Mark, through which we will move straightforwardly until Advent. The drama and tension will ratchet up as Jesus makes his way to the cross and beyond. And in today's Gospel reading, that tension, you may have noticed, is readily displayed in another moment of contentious debate between Jesus and his religious competitors, the Pharisees and the scribes. They had come from Jerusalem to Capernaum, perhaps in response to the amazing miracles they had heard, uh, they had heard about in this backwater region of Galilee. This debate, unlike the one we wrapped up in the Gospel of John last week, is not about Jesus's identity per se, but rather about what God, the Father of Lights, as the Apostle James calls him today, what God desires from humanity and how he wants us to respond to those desires. But of course, Jesus knows this, knows what God wants and how we should live because of who he is, God incarnate. So what is it that God wants? Well, we know from, he from Hebrew scriptures that God wants to be in deep relationship in covenant with all of humanity. God longs to give us life, and in exchange, all that she asks is that we love, love her and love one another. That is the overarching point and the intertwining thread that connects the different stories and genres of the Old Testament. God loves us, wants to be with us, and wants us to love each other as she loves us. Now, the how of loving God and loving one another often got expressed in legal language. Statutes and ordinances, as Deuteronomy puts it this morning, or commandments in Jesus' telling. But the commandments and the statutes and the ordinances, this covenant, was so much more than a dry, heartless judicial code, the familial, familiar lists of shalls and shall nots. The list was a helpful distillation, it still is, but even in Old Testament times, it required interpretation and adaptation. When someone broke a commandment or an ordinance, the just and equitable response that promoted both accountability and love couldn't necessarily be applied in another case. It required careful, prayerful judgment from the entire community. But sometimes the contingent interpretations and adaptations got confused for the covenant itself, particularly when it served a certain powerful group's interest. And that is the context for Jesus' debate with the Pharisees and the scribes. As in John's Gospel, whenever we see Jesus arguing with religious leaders, 
we have to remember that they are all faithful Jews, trying their best to understand and to pattern their lives on what they know of and about God, tracing back to the law of, Mo of Moses. They all have a lot in common, including that they all place a high importance on avoiding defilement. It's such a biblical word, isn't it? Defilement. And yet we don't have to go back to biblical times to see examples and effects of defilement as individuals or as a society. For example, we understand that our climate is changing too rapidly because we are still too slow to stop pumping greenhouse gases from our cars and our power plants that defile our atmosphere. Our modern culture's values of convenience and disposability have us producing around 400 million tons of plastic per year, much of which has defiled our oceans and our waterways. And now, after decades, some of all of that plastic has degraded into microscopically small particles that we are ingesting with potential impacts to our health and a defilement of our own bodies. And then there is the state of our civic and political discourse, the lies and misinformation, the flame wars we see or might even contribute to on social media, all things that defile our democracy and degrade our ability to have the rational debate that we need. And so I can easily understand why this concept takes on such weight for both Jesus and the Pharisees. Because defilement, corruption, violation, whether of nature or of ourselves, these are all the antithesis of what God is like. God is holy, sacred, and pure. And in order for us, imperfect human beings, to approach, let alone abide in, such a holy God, we need a way to overcome these imperfections. The Old Covenant had those ways of sacrifice and of setting apart certain foods or certain activities at certain times in order to close that distance between us and God. And Jesus is not disputing that there is a distance and that it needs to be closed. What he is disputing is that the Pharisees and the scribes, men steeped in the ancient laws and traditions, have added so much onto those attempts to purify the people in order to draw close to God that they have actually lost sight of the what and the why of it all. Jesus reminds them and us that it is what lies in the very heart of human nature that, the things that, that are the things that cause that defilement, that distance, and that keep us separated from God and what God dreams for us. And we see it in the examples I just gave. What keeps us polluting this fragile earth, our island home, if not our avarice, our pride, and our folly? What keeps us trapped in cycles of name-calling and belittling our opponents, if not our capacity for deceit and envy and slander? And what keeps us trapped in addictions and broken patterns that diminish the fullness of life that God wants for us, for me. It's not a tempter out there, but the intentions that come from within here. My friends, this is a hard truth that Jesus needs us to hear, not just about the nameless Pharisees from long ago, not just about the most infamous bad people in human history or even today, no, if all of these evil things come from within the human heart, then that means that we are all unclean, defiled, impure, in one way or another. And so in some ways, the Pharisees' point of view can be more to our liking. If overcoming defilement was as simple as making sure that you washed your hands and pots and kettles before you ate anything, then avoiding defilement may not have been easy, but hey, at least it might have been possible. What Jesus is suggesting is impossible. Because how can one excise 
the sources of defilement, of separation from a holy God, if they are so deep within each one of us in all of these various ways. Yes, Jesus is raising the stakes on what God wants and how we ought to live. It is serious stuff. But there is also such good news, my friends, because he is also raising our awareness of just how deep and just how wide God's mercy is in response. After his cross and resurrection, we can't ever talk about defilement and sin without also talking about God's unlimited, freely offered grace to each and every one of us. In Jesus, it is God who always closes the distance between us and her. And there's more good news. Because out of the same human heart also comes the good intentions that we also have, the intentions to care and to help one another, to share and to fix problems together, to serve and to love each other. Those also come from within us. And when we accept God's grace through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, that is what supercharges the good that is within us to overcome the evil that we see in and around us. God's grace working in us is what fuels us to keep working on our recoveries and mending our strained relationships. It's what motivates us to share from our abundance and to address the root causes of so many systemic problems and defilements, from climate change to systemic racism to the loneliness epidemic and more. No matter their source, evil and defilement will never have the last word. Only God's goodness, his grace, and his love will. Amen. Now please rise once more in body or spirit as you are able. Together let us affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, life from the light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 1. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy for the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us play, pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our bishops, Alan and Carol, and for our bishop-elect, Julia, 
for churches in a diocesan cycle of prayer. Trinity Church, Stoughton, Epiphany Church, Walpole, Emmanuel Church, West Roxbury, St. John's Church, Westwood, and trustees of donations. And for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president and for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Melrose, for every city and community and for those who live in them, for those celebrating a birthday this week, especially Gail Sherman, and for those celebrating an anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, and for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, for Evan, presiding Bishop Michael, Ellen, Timothy, Barbara, Miles, Marcia, Phil, Lois, Marilyn, Cam and Kate, Margaret, Dawn and Janet, Perry, Helen, Robert, Carol O, Chloe, David, Joan, Kate, Lily, Louise, and Sarah. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the depart departed, remembering Nancy Bozen, in whose memory the altar flowers are lovingly given, and Scott Baker, who died this last week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God, almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace again and welcome again to Trinity. Now is the time in our service for some quick announcements, which Beth, our vestry person of the day, will lead us off with. Good morning. Please join us after the service uh, on the lawn for Lemonade on the Lawn. Um, at, on the Sunday, September 15th, we'll resume having it coffee inside. So enjoy the outdoors today. Um, calling all children age 9 to 14. Uh, to help to make the backpack tags for the September 15th. Um, time slots are still available to volunteer to sit for half an hour and share with the community about Trinity at the Melrose Victorian Fair next Sunday. So to sign up online, there's a link in online and uh, there's also a sign up sheet on the bulletin board located at the back of the church. Um, the outreach opportunity for St. Luke's um, Community dining will be this uh, Saturday, September 14th. And if you're available to help, please let Reverend Isaac know. 
um, September 15th will be our Welcome Back Sunday. And following that, we're going to have a potluck picnic. So there's also a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board at the back of the church. And that day, we'll have the blessing of the backpacks at Trinity. And there's a, a lot more, and I won't bore you with reading it all. Just <laughs> check with it, uh, either online or in your bulletin. Thank you. You, Beth, so concisely and speedily covered um, everything I was going to talk about, so thank you for that. Um, a reminder, as we approach, um, it's Labor Day weekend, that means um, school uh, has just started. I heard they were in school for two days last week and then had a long weekend. Um, but families will be coming back from summer vacations. Um, these pews will fill up, so continue wearing your name tags to welcome our newcomers um, as they come and check Trinity out. Um, we'll have uh, various opportunities um, for children's formation, um, including, um, as Beth mentioned, September 8th. So if you um, have young children in your life um, and are not getting our emails, please let me know so that I can be sure that uh, everyone is getting the information that they need. Um, and finally, um, our uh, co-warden, Matt Sherman, um, who, as we all know, also our property committee chairperson has been the um, lead person on our reconstruction project, um, has been away for a couple of weeks um, for work, um, and uh, so we'll have a, a fuller update of what we expect for a construction and a construction timeline um, in the weeks to come. I know we're all very anxious as we uh, get ready for planning um, for uh, the new program year and Christmas and everything that comes after, um, but we just need a little bit information um, and then we will let you know. Um, any other announcements for the good of the church? Then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. that this is God's table and not our own. Everyone is welcome and everyone is invited to this table if you wish to encounter the real presence of God in Christ in this holy meal. If for whatever reason you prefer to receive neither the bread nor the wine, please approach the altar rail as well 
and simply cross your arms over your chest to receive a blessing instead. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey, with or towards God, know that you are welcome and you are invited to this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all, your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts that your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ, Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time. Gather us with Mary the God-bearer and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for God's holy people.
please rise once more in body or spirit as you are able. And together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, beloved, receive this blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.